oh, oh, this is, this is Shockwave. And I couldn't help making that noise, and I couldn't help bouncing him a little bit, because he's on his glider, his, like, goblin glider thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then bone up on your Spider-Man, man. This is the new Transformer Siege Shockwave. And while there's so very much here to like, there's some things here that really bother me, too. We're going to dissect it all, because he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L, and me everywhere. And this is the new Siege Shockwave. Boy, oh boy, was I excited for this guy. He is a leader class figure. We have measured all of these guys by guilty or innocent in terms of whether or not the price increase that they've undergone is justified. This guy will be no different. And while there's a lot here that I really, really like, there's also a lot here that really bothers me. Anyway, without any further ado, I'm going to stop babbling. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And indeed, we come to uh, our apex of the Wave 1 for the Transformers Siege line with Leader Class Shockwave. He's also the most controversial of the line thus far. So we're going to take a quick look at the box for the cool, cruel, and cunning Shockwave. And like it's a box, uh, you know, nothing I guess to get super duper excited about. You know, it's fine. It's a Siege. Leader class, it's Shockwave. Beautiful artwork of Shockwave over here, though. Now, he's not in his, like, souped up, amped up mode. And I think his eye is red. I'm glad that we got the yellow, because that's accurate. The, this red isn't, but like, oh, oh, okay, I guess. All right. Um, this side, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And on the back, of course, we get those... Oh, let's see if I can... There. We get those product shots, and... Okay. Like, fine. I, uh, you hear me making those noises, because I'm not... There's things here that are bothering me as I see them. There's things here already that are bothering me as I see them. Nevertheless, we will continue on with instructions. And these, again, they look fine. There's a lot of stuff covered in it. It's actually a fairly large instruction sheet. Um, but I feel like everything is crisp and clear in it, which is not something that we've traditionally had with instruction sheets. Unless you haven't been paying attention, then you realize by now that my favorite part of the instruction sheets has become the ever-popular accessories stats. Okay, so we have three here. One is his actual, like, hand that's a blaster. Uh, the other over on this side refers to, like, the two, like, vestigial blaster hands he has. They're, you know, they're about the same strength. They're... Not quite as accurate, pretty close though. Their, uh, I guess, fire blast, their range, whatever, is pretty good, but not as good as his actual blaster hand. Uh, and then we have his, like, his toe blasters. All these have names. I don't know what they are right now, and I'm not trying to get in close to read that little writing there. You can if you want. They all have, like, ridiculous names, but his little toe blasters, when you put some of his armor on, is extremely strong. Like, okay, when you shoot from your feet, you're going to be pretty strong. And it has, you know, every, honestly, everything about this guy is strong. He is a force to reckon with and a force of nature, no doubt about it. And then we have this, fresh out of packaging. And, like, what? I don't, what is this? Like, what? But it's still captivating, and I tell you why it's captivating. Because of the light piping. This is the best single best light piping I have ever seen on a figure, I think, maybe next to Voyager class Springer from the Generations line some years ago, which is still regarded as one of the best Voyagers ever. But, okay, yet I looked at this and as weird as this is, 
I could see, I could see the ideal shockwave therein. So we popped them in a package, and when I popped them in a package, I got rid of a lot of this ridiculous junk and trash that's on them. But before I do that, before I do that, let's get something in perspective here, because we know that we've been measuring these guys as we always do with our paint apps, our post-ability, playability, and the transformation, but there's also a new dimension now of guilty or innocent. Is this guy worth a leader class price point? And around here, the leader class price point Again, it went up. It went up by ten bucks. Now, a ten buck, a ten dollar raise in my neck of the woods on a deluxe meant about thirty-three percent of an increase overall in the price. For a Voyager, it meant about a twenty-five percent increase overall in the price. And for a leader, once you do all the math, the end result is that it's an increase of about twenty percent in the price, roughly. And is this guy worth a twenty percent increase as a? leader class figure. Well, here we have him next to Power of the Primes Optimus Prime, who is a traditional leader class size. And you can see that Shockwave is nowhere close to as big. Now you might say, hey, he's bulkier because he has so much other things on him. Sure, maybe he is, which brings us to the plastic content. Power of the Prime's leader class Optimus Prime, just like Rodimus Prime and Rodimus Unicronus, just like Titan's Return, Soundwave, and Blaster, comes in at 327-328 grams of plastic. That's what a leader class was allocated to be. What about the new ones? Well, in Shockwave's case, he's only coming in at 215 grams of plastic. That is a loss of 112 grams of plastic at least, yet the price went up $10. We can't talk about the packaging having an increase this time because leader classes have always come in boxes. So right away, we're looking at this guy is shorter, this guy has 100, over 100 grams less plastic. Not a good sign, man. Not a good sign. And now I get it. Some people will say, hey, Gotbot, you can make up for the missing mass by just building him up even more. Add more to him. And indeed you can do that. The guy has about six pegs. He has 12 or 14 ports on him. Both him and his armor pieces. He has um, about four or six of those little blast effect wart things on his body. Like you see one down on his leg. Each of his three actual blasters can accommodate one. You see he's covered here with a bunch of MicroMasters. So yes, admittedly, you can build him up into quite an armament of a monstrosity of a thing. But like, is it still even Shockwave then or is it just like a monster? I don't know. Nevertheless, here he is all cogged up. And like now he has not one but two pairs of boots on. Like. I used a couple of the other kind of blast effect warts. Like, all right, I guess. Like, this is a monstrosity, and there's still ever so many ports and pegs free where you could add even more on. You get the idea, I'm sure. Granted, Brunt would probably look pretty cool in this monstrous getup. I can see how that might be interpreted as pretty darn cool. Nevertheless. All I've ever wanted, and what I think a lot of people want, is a shockwave that just looks like shockwave, man. And how do we get that? Well, we get that by removing this backpack junk piece, this off of his shoulder piece, and it just pegs in. There's a peg in here, and of course a port on his shoulder. Same over on this side. We wiggle it off. There's a port on his shoulder and a peg inside there. And we come down here and take that off and come down here. Ah, and take that off and this is what we're left with and this is all I ever needed man and this makes a fantastic Voyager class shockwave or if you prefer this type of Voyager class shockwave a little bit shorter of course he's most intended to scale with this guy and they do it beautifully when he's a Voyager and until getting this new Shockwave four years, really, I guess it's about, what, 2012 or so, the Deluxe Class FOC Shockwave stood as my iteration of the character. 
arguably he is too small. But you know what? It's a solid shockwave. It's a fine shockwave. You're not mistaking it for a second. The only thing at all really about the FOC that bothered me is I wished his eye was yellow, which the new one has. Both of them have pretty dandy light piping though. If you have the FOC and you're happy with them, do you need to upgrade to this new one? Um, not really. Unless you're a G1 purist or you have a real problem with the size or whatever, not really. I think the FOC one is still pretty great for what it is, despite its imperfections. And the FOC one does have two hands, which is kind of cool if you want them to have two hands. Needless to say, the G1 fan in me really did want this proper shockwave. But the truth is, he should have been a boy draw along without all that extra junk. It's not looking good for him being justified. Uh, paint apps. 10. Perfect 10. I did add silver on his elbows because that's accurate, but you, did, you just don't need to. You can leave him purple and it's still fine. Like, this is shockwave. I feel like this is more accurate than what the masterpiece looks like because I felt like that really bright purple was too bright. It didn't do the trick for me at all. I love this. I think it's fantastic. The articulation for the guy. Well, we've already seen a lot of play versatility, and we're going to see some more in a few moments. But the articulation for the base robot, since we have him here, is also pretty fantastic. We have arms that can go forward and back. Now, this one, because of the rubber hose, like can't really go all the way around because you'll kind of mess up the hose. We have a bicep swivel. We have an elbow to over 90 degrees um, on this side of his body. The arm can go all the way around. The elbow is still over 90, 90 degrees. The swivel, we have a wrist rotation on this side. Uh, do we have a rotate? I don't think so, but we don't really need it here. Oh, we do have a rotation there. Go figure, we do have a rotation there. We didn't need it, but we got it. Uh, the head, it can go left, it can go right, it can wiggle up and down a little bit. He has a waist that can go all the way around. He has hips that are friction out to the side, but friction really well. He has a thigh rotation. He has a ratcheted knee to 90 degrees. Legs can go back on a soft ratchet, forward on a soft ratchet. That's tolerance real nice. The, no movement at the feet other than a tilt side to side that I guess helps with some posing, but he stands like an absolute champion. And I love the molding. Like, the shape of his forearm compared to his hand is perfectly accurate. I absolutely dig it. Articulation 10. Okay, so let's deal with the elephant in the room for a moment. All of this extra junk. Now, it's not detailed in the instructions, but we all know it can go together to become like a kind of a goblin glider type of deal form. And it's even shown on the back, but it's not detailed in the instructions. But before we get to that, you could also do something like this. You can attach those pieces to another figure like Megatron here. Now, I'm sure there's a way to kind of do the like the whole backpack weird section here too, but like, I, whatever, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. You'll notice that on this arm, that is down and flopping. That is not a well-toleranced peg hole over on that shoulder at all. But what if you're like me and you are not remotely interested in making any of your figures look completely ridiculous because that's exactly what it is. What, what do you do now? Well, you're going to kind of make a glider thing, sort of. So we're just going to lay these pieces aside and we're going to deal with this piece first. And really what you're doing is you're taking the... Oh, I, I also forgot to mention that we have... I forget it because I don't, I don't, like, I don't like this. You could also bring these things out if you're so inclined. I don't know why you would do that, but whatever. Um, so you can take these and you're going to basically put them on this. You need a little bit of solidity. So you're going to take these little kind of pieces right here and fold them in and they do tab in to each other. And this is the basis of what you're building. Then you're going to basically, um, see if I can remember how this is done now. Yeah, you're going to use these pegs right here, and you're going to use one of the holes underneath the foot, and you're going to kind of fit the toes in there and 
you'll sort of peg this on which one do I use. Like that. You'll kind of do it like that. Now, underneath here, there are two peg holes, one in, in here and one out here. When you do it, you're using the peg hole on like the outer edge of his foot. Put this in under, and you tab it down, and then the feet, they also tab together. And now you have the, the core of this here. You can take these little pieces, I guess, and I don't do anything with them. Maybe not. Maybe they have to stay like that. Then you take the arms here on the side and you use the peg and the peg hole here or the peg hole here. I'm going to use the one up front. We'll do that. And then we'll take the other one here and we'll do that. And we have this like glider thing. Um, I guess like I guess it's cool that he has it to move around on. Obviously his feet would peg onto these pegs here. Um, I don't know. Is this cool? Am I the only one thinking that this is absolutely not needed? Like, I have never ever seen Shockwave use this ever. Not once. Ever. I didn't need it. It's all wasted plastic on me that's only going to end up going thrown in a bag somewhere and never ever used because I don't want my Shockwave to look ridiculous and I think this is ridiculous. Man, this guy's such a mixed bag because I, I think he's so tremendous, but at the same time, like, there's so many things about him that I don't dig at all. Let's get into the conversion. Right now he's getting a 10. It is a perfect shockwave at this point. This guy is such an oddity. Like, I love him, but there's a lot that I really dislike about him as well. Uh, right now he's getting a 10, and I don't know if I said it or not, but I'll do it now just in case. I know I went through all of his articulation, but I feel like I forgot his shoulders. Not only do they go all the way around, and I mentioned that, but they can also go like way up over his head. Like, <laughs> they're perfect. They're perfect. Um, either way, he's getting a 10. Let's get into the conversion for this guy. And it's pretty stellar as well. So how do we do this? What we're going to do is upper body first. We begin by picking up this backpack section. And I would even suggest to you, go ahead and open it up. Then come to his chest and open that out and fold in his head and once you have his head folded in properly close up his chest again then you want to bring that arm up over bring this arm up over and unpeg the hose after you've done that oh actually you want to keep these apart for a moment because you have to get the backpack kind of up and between the arms so that the arms rest behind the main kind of flap of the backpack. I know it's at a screen. Let me just adjust things and you'll see what I mean. And naturally at this point he really elongates out but like I said both arms are behind the like one of the flaps of the backpack. The connector arm of the backpack goes down between the arms. It's brilliant. This folds down over the hands and folds in over. We're gonna keep that landing skid down for now. We take the hose and it actually goes into the landing skid for now. Uh, we come down to the legs next. So how do we handle the legs? Well, we come to the side and we open out, if I can do it, there, open out that section of the leg and do the same on the other side. You're going to open it out. Uh, this leg was around backwards because we do have to put it that way. And now that we have those out, now we turn it around. And we turn it around. We're going to collapse these legs, very Combiner Wars style-ish, up and up. We take these two kind of shin sections and we bring them down and we will tab them together. They will tab into a little slot right here, kind of on Shockwave's tummy. And the legs, they tab together and we get a Submarine mode! Or if you're anything like me, his traditional G1 blaster mode, and I love this. It is glorious, and this is why I have this guy. This is the shockwave I've always wanted. But that's not all you can do. Of course, you can kind of armor this guy up. Turning him back around this way is the way to do that. Because remember, this is his vehicle mode. We can detach 
and this is really hard to do. You see me struggling here. There, we can detach the hose. We'll leave that out for the time being. We're going to begin with the, I guess, huge backpack piece. And really what you're going to do is you're going to put it on over here, bring it down the sides, and those like two little like blaster sections that we had right here, I don't know if you can see that, that we had right here that tabbed into each other for the glider mode, will now tab in kind of under his belly. So we'll bring that over. Right? No, it's not over. Why is this not going over? So we put that down over like that. And then we... Wow, this does not want to cooperate with me today. There, down over like that. There, there, there. We got it all down over. We put these two pieces together. And we have all that like built on there, I guess. I don't, I don't, whatever. I don't like it. Uh, we put this piece in this slot here on the side or here. We'll, maybe we'll have better luck putting it up there. There, we'll do that. Then we deal with the kind of arm section things, I believe, next, if I'm not mistaken. And... We position them like this, and they're going to go attached back right here, right there, and same on the other side. Right there. Then we have his two, I'll call them feet section. And there's a little wing on the foot section that you can open out from underneath and it just opens out like from, it just opens out like right there. And once you have that opened out, you can do something with this. I just don't know what it is. I had to go and look and we have uh, a peg right there and we have a, like a slot on the side of the foot and that goes on like that. And then same on the other side, it can go on, gosh, like that. And we have this huge thing here. I'm going to back away just so you can see it. There's a little like landing skid thing up near the front. I, like, I guess it's cool that he can become a Cybertronian ship, I suppose, but I, it's not for me. I don't like this. It was unnecessary. I just needed his sub slash blaster mode. I don't know. I almost prefer something like this, though I've seen better. I've seen ways where this front section is somehow put back here to give the uh, elongation. I don't know how it's attached. Whatever. But like you can use his legs and put them down and somehow finagle things around so that you do sort of get like his stationary blaster mode or some variation of it and I'm cooler with that than I am with the huge Cybertronian ship but that's just me nevertheless the transformation is easy it's interesting it's a 10 this guy's a 10 is he guilty or innocent here's the thing if he was released as a Voyager without all this extra junk I would say Shockwave is innocent he is a perfect Shockwave he's a 10 however because he's at a leader class price point, he is significantly lighter, and he has all this unnecessary vestigial junk. I have to say, Shockwave, as perfect as he is, is guilty. He is not worth a leader class price point. If you can resist, wait until the day comes that he goes on sale. Because he's definitely going to at some juncture. I got to believe. And so here we are. And, like... This is, this was so challenging. It's like the shockwave, I, the update I've always been waiting for. This is perfect. It is a fun, yet uh, interesting, yet easy transformation. It is impeccable articulation. It is superb coloration. He is a 10. It's perfect. It is the shockwave the fans have been waiting for. And if he was sold as a Voyager, 
when it came to the price increase with everything that's done right here and every joint working so perfectly and nicely, I would honestly say, it. yeah, it's justified. I see the molded in detail, the paint, I see the engineering, I see it all. And then I would say it's justified. The problem is that's not where the story went. The story went with this guy being a leader and coming in at a leader price point. This is a Voyager class figure. And the only reason he comes in at a leader price point is because of all of this excessive... See? Like, that's even stuck to his foot. All of this extra excessive, like, junk. All of this extra plastic junk. None of this needed to be here. None of this, as far as I'm concerned, adds anything. Some will say, yes, it adds play value. And you can use it on other figures. Do you really want to? Do any of these pieces look good? I don't think so. So, to me, there you go, we'll throw that, that's where that belongs. And here's what we're left with. And while this is absolutely glorious, it's not worth the price increase. It's not, he is guilty. He is guilty of being overpriced. I think that every collector that wants a shockwave, especially anybody who is into the main line, most especially anyone who is into the main line, you owe to yourself to get this guy. But you also owe to yourself, I think, to wait until he's on clearance. That's just my two cents. I mean, it's your dime, man. Use it however you want. But if you can hold off, you know, if you, if you want him bad enough, then hey, go get it. But if you can hold off, I think he's worth kind of seeking out the right deal for. Anyway, let me know your experience with this guy. I'm so happy to have him. Not happy with what I paid for him. You know, I love to hear from you guys. I appreciate you dropping by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. Again, I'm going to say please hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.